welcome. I'm Sarah Barker. This is going to be yoga. I, um, I had a really fun freedom playlist last year um, when I did a 4th of July yoga. It was super fun. And I went to try to play it today. And like in my iTunes, um, four or five of the songs are like just completely missing. I don't even know. I mean, I bought them. I don't even know what's happening. So, um, and music never seems to work anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Um, if you, um, so we're all regulars here. So if you want to go ahead and get into a nice, um, you got to hold her collar and then brush her from the back. There you go. Um, go ahead and come to a standing position on your mat in mountain pose, Tadasana. I'm going to take my shoes off. So finding that comfortable standing position, hips are neutral. Discovered that that's super, like even more important lately. Okay, we can talk about it in a minute, babe. All right, y'all. So finding that floor or that mat or that earth underneath your feet, start to kind of just wiggle those toes around and dig them down into that, that space between you, your toes and the floor. And just kind of try to fill um, every single part of the bottom of your feet with some kind of ground. All right, hands are forward, hips are neutral, pelvis is neutral, making sure we don't have that, you know, teenage girl back going, but we also don't have the, the old man hips going. We've got a nice neutral hip. Not like my, my teenage girl doesn't stand like that, but some teenage girls. <laughs> Spreading out your fingers like you're a little tree frog. You're wanting to really spread your feet, feet, feet out, toes, not fingers, toes out, like you're a tree frog. Opening up the chest, lifting the heart center just a little bit, but keeping your hips neutral, taking a deep breath in. And exhale, nice full breath. This time do that again and see if you can put more of the breath in your belly and your lungs, not just your lungs. And exhale. All right, taking some time to drop that ear down towards one shoulder. Taking it to the opposite side, finding some lateral for, uh, flexion in that neck. Looking from left to right, looking down and up, just finding some rotation in that upper cervical spine. Moves that we do all day, every day, but maybe not so slowly. So it gives us a chance to kind of stretch and lengthen those muscles that provide so much movement for us every day. Maybe just rotating our shoulders back and around. And as always, we live in a, a screen society, a screen generation. So we don't need to spend a lot of time forward, forward stretching those shoulders. They do that on their own every day. So we're just gonna kind of open them up real big. So you can really wrap your shoulder blades around your spine. You can real like over exaggerate that stretch. In other words, all right, taking our right arm all the way up towards the ceiling, lifting our middle finger, and then leaving, leaning into that right heel, stretching, creating dynamic resistance between the ribs and the armpit, and then switching. Full deep breath in. And exhale, pressing into that left foot. Going back to the opposite side. Maybe looking up at that hand as you push into that foot. And restoring balance to that body, other side. And hands come down. All right, so we're just gonna take a little Tai Chi uh, movement here, just kind of wrapping our arms around our body. Let your arms hang heavy. 
Like literally, if you're feeling your hands slap your elbows, you're doing it right. It's like your arms are heavy and your feet are coming up off the floor, one heel at a time. See if you can get a full rotation and look behind you. Kind of playful. It looks like something you would do on the playground with a little girl and like a cute little twirly skirt. I don't know when the last time you wore a twirly skirt was, but you showed it and do this and it feels good. I like it. All right, so go ahead and take a deep breath in. Hands are gonna come all the way up, extended mountain pose, fingertips touch briefly, separate them and then come on down to forward fold. Activating the backs of those legs, feet can be together or apart, depending on what you feel good doing. And then just let your whole upper body hang. I encourage you to activate Vishuddha Bandha. So locking that throat by dropping your chin to your chest so that it, it, so that it, it takes a lot of effort to swallow. Your crown of your head is pointed towards the floor, eyes are towards your knees, chin is towards your chest. Let's take a couple of breaths here and push that breath into the back body, opening up the rib cages in the back. If your hands don't touch the floor, that's okay. Let them hang heavy. Let your elbows maybe cradle in your, arm, your hands. Smoothing out any wrinkles in the backs of your necks. And then we're going to take a nice deep breath, come up to half lift, lifting up the chest. Inhale. And as you exhale, drop back down, wrap those arms around your legs and bind your forward fold if you can. If you can't, so that's feel good. Bring your hands to the backs of the calves. Take a deep breath in, lifting the chest just a hair, and then as you exhale, come a little closer to those legs. Okay. Inhale, four. Three, three, three. Three, three, three. All right, deep breath in, coming all the way up. It's a monkey, pressing those. On my couch again, pressing those heels of the hands underneath the knees. You can help that guy to take the back hand. Or if you can stay up here, you can roll the chest. Lifting that chest. <laughs> All right, then we're going to bring, bring our feet closer together and we're going to drop the elbows to the knee. So you may have to, to kind of drop your hips just a little bit, like you're kneeling or not kneeling, squatting pads. And we're going to take our knees and keep them in one spot. Pretend like there's something in front of your knees preventing them to, from moving. And we're going to take our right arm and we're just going to kind of thread it through, pushing that elbow into that leg. Our other arm can either come straight up, you can bind it, you can bring it into a nice prayer pose here. But we're trying to keep the knees in line. That's the key. So whatever feels good, Miss Swift. A couple breaths. And then rotate back into the middle, lifting the hips briefly. And then coming back down, opposite side, threading that left arm through, propping the elbow up on the outside of the leg, and then pushing against your leg to open it up. Deep full breath here. And then right back into forward fold one last time. Maybe spread those feet back out a little bit. All right, hands are going to open up wide. We're going to take them out to the outside or to the edge of our mat or at least close to it, pressing your hips up and your heels down into downward facing dog, lifting the tailbone, allowing it to kind of curl upward towards the ceiling. And then let's take a few deep breaths here, really pressing those armpits towards the toes, lifting through the chest as you inhale. Pressing through the heels as you exhale, extending the backs of our legs. Really noticing that nice, long hamstring muscle that you feel. All right, now we're going to slowly take a deep breath in. We're going to kind of roll it forward, not quite into plank, on our toes, and then push it back into down dog. So you can roll around your back, and then maybe come into a plank, and then push back into down dog or you can just stay with the roll. So it's just kind of coming over, like around his shoulder, and then back into down dog. Or you can go from your rounded shoulder into that plank, 
and then push back into down dog. So do this a couple of times. Your breath is inhale on the forward and exhale on the push back. Don't forget the rounding of the back in the beginning. Kind of rolling through those shoulders. And let's just get one more round that back. Oh, all kinds of popping is happening. All kinds of elbow popping is happening over here. All right, let's walk our feet out just a little bit. Just walk your heels towards the floor. Slowly, let's drop our knees down and push back into a real brief child's pose. So you can be extended here, or you can be hands down into rabbit. You can prop your your uh, hands underneath your head. Whatever feels good. Just take a couple breaths there. It's also a great time to get something to drink. Hydrate, all that good stuff. All right, so one more deep breath in and out. And then coming up onto our hands and knees. Spread those fingers out really wide, have a wide base. Pressing your shoulders away from your body. And then also pressing your ears away from your shoulders. So this is something that I've noticed like lately I've been doing um, when I get tired. I kind of sink, I sink into my shoulders like this. Um, and so I'm really trying to make a conscious effort to push away. The second thing I've noticed is that I hyperextend my elbows if I lock if I lock my arms out. So I have to keep a bend in my elbows. So if that's you too, and I know a lot of a lot of women, a lot of men too, are are they can hyperextend that elbow and lock it. We don't want that because that activates that joint. That joint is holding us up instead of our muscles. So really just lengthen through the neck, lengthen through the shoulders. And then keep those elbows um, somewhat soft. Taking a deep breath in, we're gonna roll the tailbone up towards the ceiling and the belly is gonna be real big like a cow. And then we're gonna exhale, tucking that tailbone underneath our body, like you're tucking your tail between your legs, round up to cat. So like a Halloween cat, and then dropping down into a big belly cow. So inhaling on the cow, opening up that neck, and then exhaling on the cat, the Shudavanda once again, locking that neck in, locking that throat. Inhale all the way up. And then exhale one last time. All right, y'all know the drill. We're gonna come looking over our shoulder and bringing that hip as if we're trying to bring that hip around to our elbow. Imagine that the base of your spine is kind of dangling from right to left, like you're holding a necklace in your hand, and it's just kind of swaying back and forth. Good job, y'all. All right, and last but not least, our favorite, we're going to bring it into a barrel roll. So taking the hips in one rotation and the shoulders in another. And I want you to think about it being super dramatic, like super over-exaggerated, this movement. So like you're like, you've got a snake spine and it's just curving and wiggling around. Go in the opposite direction when you're ready. Excellent work. All right, bring it right back into that four, all four position. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and take those hands. Spread them out real, real big. Pushing up into down to facing dog. Oh, that breeze feels amazing. All right, we're going to take that body all the way forward into a plank position. Starting in a kneeling position if you'd like, or you can just go straight to plank. Halfway down the crocodile. Not around up. So we're going to push up to upward facing dog. If you're modifying it like I am, your knees are on the floor. If you're in upward facing dog, your knees are off the floor. Toes are turning up, coming down. Hips are coming up. Let's do that again. We're going to lower to plank. Inhale. Exhale, Taranga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. So I want you guys to do that a couple more times on your own, find your own little flow. If you want to add a variation to it, add a variation to it. Maybe go into a one-legged plank, one-legged chaturanga, and then go into your upward dog. That's a fun, uh, a little more advanced variation. 
Maybe you want to add something else and add it at twist. Whatever you want to do. I'm flipping it live here, y'all. Good, beautiful. Excellent, Jessica, very nice. Good, Kayla. Nice, smooth movement. Well done, get Caroline. Y'all just do about two or three more and then let's meet in downward facing dog. Good, taking your time, full breath here. If you need a rest, you can always drop down into chop pose. All right, we're gonna take that right leg, we're gonna bring it all the way up to the ceiling. Rotate that ankle, stack those hips, bend the knee, and then slide that knee, slide that foot in, that knee to the hands, anchoring that back foot coming up into warrior one. Remember, everything is squared up towards that front knee. We're pushing into that front heel, lifting the chest, arms are coming open. So I prefer warrior one in gratitude pose. My hands open for gratitude. Some people like to bring their hands all the way to prayer pose, um, extended, which is great. Um, keeps the energy in, in through the, the whole body, from the floor, from the ground, to your feet all the way through your hands and back down so it kind of keeps the energy there you can bring it to your heart center have a little more focus um, inwardly a little bit more on some self-love there whatever arms you do it's totally fine we're going to open it up and go to warrior two looking over that right shoulder sinking down into both heels shoulders are pulled back and your belly is zipped up <clears throat> imagine that that zipper starts at the base of your pelvic floor and it's pulled all the way tight. So you want to really squeeze those pelvic muscles. Mula Banda. We're going to open that front hand. We're going to reach just a little bit and then sweep up towards the reverse warrior, sinking into those legs, pressing both feet into the floor. Strong core, lifting that hand. All right, opening it up. Back to warrior two. Straightening up that front leg. And then we're gonna bend it once again and we're gonna go into angle pose today. So we're gonna drop that forearm to that quad. We're gonna bring that opposite arm up and we're gonna rotate it back. Once you're in angle pose, I want you to think about that left hip bone. I want you to drop it. So we're gonna drop the hips. It almost squares your body up just a little bit. So we're in modified angle. If you want to go down a full angle, you can always drop it down to the floor, opening up that chest, opening up the hands, keeping that left hip dropped. We have a tendency to want to keep that hip up because it's it's harder to keep it down. Binders, if you want to go ahead and bind here, you can always reach underneath that leg, binding through the hands, opening up. That chest once again, big breath. And rotate it around. The heel comes up, push back into our downward facing dog. Woo. Take a couple of deep breaths here. All right, we're going to take that same leg once again, that right leg. We're going to bring it up. We're going to sweep it forward for the hands. And then we're going to walk our hands towards the side of your mat so that we're in a uh, straddle, standing straddle position. <coughs> it's also a forward fold here. So if you want to use your hands to prop yourself up, you can, or a block. Um, and then we're going to just sink those elbows down towards the floor. Dropping that head, dropping that chin.
All right, slowly coming up onto those hands. Excuse me, guys. Keep going with those today. And then we're going to just walk those hands towards the opposite side and anchor those feet, coming all the way up into that downward face. Or, I'm sorry, warrior one on the work today. Your hip and your chest are all towards that front leg, pushing into that heel. Oh, it might be late. Right, opening up that side body to that warrior two, pulling the shoulder blades together, squeezing through the spine, lifting up on that base of the pelvis, activate that mula bandha. Makes us stronger in our base. It makes us a little bit more stable, have a little bit more control. That front hand is gonna flip up. We're gonna sweep up, reverse warrior. Pressing into those heels. All the sweat going down my arm. Bring it back to warrior two. Straighten, just give yourself a little rest. Reset, and then bend that front knee. Dropping into that modified angle pose we discovered. So we're opening up the chest, opening up the armpit, and kind of looking up that hand. And then taking this right hip, just kind of easing it down towards the floor. When you're ready, if you want to go down to full angle, you can. Binders, go ahead and bind it if you'd like. Hand comes back to that hip, underneath, clasp the other hands. Or maybe you just want to do the, the top hand. That's okay. All right, rotating around, turning that back heel up, pushing into that downward facing dog. Let's walk it out. Whew. All right, taking that left foot this time, we're gonna bring it all the way up, stacking the hips, rotating that ankle, bending the knee, knocking that heel towards the floor, sweep that foot up, and walk back to the front of that mat or side of that mat. Elbows are sinking, pushing into those hands a little bit. Maybe wiggling those hands a little bit, loosening up those hip joints. All right, we're going to bend the knees. We're going to walk our hands all the way up. Opening up that chest, squeezing through the shoulders into that sun god pose, sinking into those legs. Strong, stable base once again. Remember that, that mula bandha. We're activating from the from the base of the of the pelvic floor. All right, and then we're gonna hinge at the hips, coming back down into that straddle, that seating straddle forward fold. We're gonna walk our feet in just a little bit, y'all. Um, a little bit more than hip width apart. Maybe about where you would use to put your feet if you're doing a squat in the gym. And then we're gonna hinge at the waist, hinge at the hips, elbows come inside the knees, prayer pose with the hands, and then we're just gonna barely rotate the hips underneath into garland pose. So what we don't wanna do is, um, is collapse into ourselves. Um, this is not active anything, okay? It's actually really comfy, but we're not active anything. So we're pressing out on the knees, we're actually lifting up, and it's an active pose. You shouldn't be able to feel like you can stay here all day. If you need to put your hands on the floor, that's fine. And then we'll all come down on the, with our hands on the floor. And we're gonna practice crow today, because I know you guys want to. Everybody always wants to practice crow, right? If you've got a, a pillow and you wanna put it underneath where your face might land, that's fine. You can do that, but you don't have to. You're gonna spread your fingers out. You can either start in this crouch position, or you can start with the, hip, the hips lifted. We're bringing the, the knees to the triceps, and then we're sinking into that, 
the hands only. Feet are going to come elevated behind us. Um, for the side view, you can always keep one foot down on the floor as a kickstand. You can also use a, a block. This is actually how I've taught several people to do it. So your face can balance as well as your hands, and then you can kind of see what it takes, see what it would take to, to remove that, that block. So hands are underneath those legs. I want to crack them up the concrete here. And just try it a few times. See if you can hold that crow pose. Balance more than strength here. How are we doing? Fun story, I'll have to remind you, all have to remind me, I have a video of me doing this on a paddleboard and I fall. I completely face plant on the paddleboard and I almost fall into the water. It's magical, it's a great video. <laughs> like I literally can't stop laughing even when I think about it. So it's okay to fall. If you've never done this pose, you've probably never fallen in this pose. All right, so once you're done with that, we're gonna do frog pose today for our hips. Um, so if you're on a mat and, and you don't have carpet or something underneath you, if you have carpet underneath your mat, you're probably fine. Um, but anytime I'm on a hard surface, I always have to tell people to kind of um, double loop your mat. My, this blue mat doesn't really do it, but double, double loop your mat where your knees will be. Um, or you can put some towels or pillows underneath your knees. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down onto our knees. And I want you to think about your legs being like a frog. So we walk out as far as we can, as far out on your knees as you can. And then the heels line up with the knees. Concrete. So the heels are lining up with the knees. Your toes are flexed like the feet of a frog. And then what I want you to do is I want you to activate that core, roll the belly button in towards the spine, and then just start to sink back. Like you're trying to push your, your butt even with your knees or even past your knees. There should be lots of sensations happening in your hip joints. Lots of feelings. So um, caution your body against dropping the belly here and pushing the belly towards the front. Um, we wanna keep an active spine here and, and an active core. You're feeling comfortable in that position and you've got a great range of motion in your hips. You feel like you can, we're gonna walk down onto our elbows. If your body is saying, not today, sister, then don't do it. Your body is literally different every single day. Every yoga practice is different. That's what we call practice. Some days are stretchier than others. <laughs> and some days are stronger than others. So just listen to your body here. Let's take a few breaths in that frog pose. It's a very intense pose. Allow your hips to open. Let the breath relax your hips. If you feel a lot of tension in your hips right now, you're not relaxing. So take a deep breath in and with your exhale, see if you can kind of soften through the hips. One more deep breath in. Last exhale, sink back just a little more. Slowly walking those hands up. Listen carefully, feet first. Feet come in, hips go back, and last your knees. And you'll know why. You'll know why when your knees start to move back in together. You feel it? You feel all that? So we house um, our emotions, a lot of our emotions, in our, in our hip region. So whenever you do an intense pose like frog or pigeon pose or anything like that where it's really intense through the hip joints, um, cow face pose even, these are, these are sometimes um, very emotional poses for people. Um, I don't have a whole lot of crying in my classes, but when there is crying, it's almost always a hip opener. Um, and almost always they come in after class. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what happened. Nothing's wrong. It wasn't you. It was, and I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's okay. It's normal. That sacral chakra is just, it houses our emotions in that bundle of nerves. So totally emotional. If you're an emotional person, 
and you felt that, then you're you're normal. Good job. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and have a seat on our mat. I'm thinking about turning turning our mat. So um, have a seat on your butt and, and bring your legs out in front of you into that seated staff pose. <sighs> Lifting those hips out of the way. And then we're going to do our seated forward fold. So we're just going to kind of come down. Chest is coming towards the knees. Belly button is moving forward rather than down. So thinking about it flattening. Um, grabbing the backs of the knees if you need to. If you've got a strap, this is a great place to use it. Um, looping that strap underneath your feet so that you can really, really stretch into it. Or you can grab your feet. And we're going to have our sinking breath going here. So we're inhaling through the chest or through the chest and lungs, opening it up. And then as we exhale, we're just kind of folding, allowing that body to drop a little heavy. You can drop your head if you like. We're going to be here for several breaths. So take your time. Imagine that your body is becoming a little bit more malleable while you're stretching. Just going a little further, a little more stretchy. How deep can you let your breath take your, take your stretch? And just take one more deep breath here. Exhale slowly. Coming all the way back up to a seated position. Ooh, my back. Ooh, my back. All right, let's bring our left foot into our chest. Um, I'm stacking that foot as much as you can underneath your knee. We're going to take a nice deep twist here. If it's more comfortable for you to cross that leg over and do a little bit more of the outside loop, that's fine. Um, we're going to just kind of hug that knee and rotate towards that knee, sitting up as tall as you can. Try to keep both booty cheeks on the floor. So if you're, if you're kind of leaning over to one side, um, that'll help you kind of settle up a little bit. If you're feeling like you can go a little further and you want to expand and stretch, you can always use that elbow press away from your body and really activate that stretch. So thinking about pulling your head up towards the ceiling, lifting up the spinal crater, and release. I find that this position is so much harder to twist in than crossing over. I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's just because I can't sit up as straight or what. Keeping this leg where it is. We're going to come inside of that bent knee and we're going to stretch down towards that leg. So if you want to stretch over kind of to the, to the side of the leg a little bit, um, keeping that knee where you are, you may notice that this does not allow you to go further. Like it's, a lot of people are stopped by that leg, um, just depending on different frames of bodies. Um, this is, so this is a great place, again, to use a strap or use a, a sock or something so that you can still get that stretch without feeling like that leg is in the way. Right and then from here, we're going to take the, the, the same arm as, as near that bent leg, and we're going to wrap that arm around. See if you can find your lower back with the backs of your fingers. And then we're going to take the opposite hand and reach through and bind if you can. If not, just keep your, your fingers placed on the back of your, on your lower back. But if you can bind, we're binding this pose. Straight spine, leaning forward, breathing. And slowly release. It's always interesting. Some of the stretchiest people I know 
um, cannot cannot bind their fingers in that pose. Um, it's a lot about how we're, how our hips are, are settled and how we can bend forward, and it's it's, it's for crazy. So we're going to bring that other leg in. See if you can just bring it as tight as you can, sitting up real straight, wrapping that arm around that bent knee, and rotating to the side, making sure that we're breathing. Remember, any twisting mo motion, any twisting poses, massage our intestines. These are digestive poses, really. Um, so if you can just think about that, think about the fact that your body has, your organs have to kind of move out of the way. We don't ever want to rush a twist. We don't ever want to um, force a twist. We just breathe through it. You want a little extra twist? Coming into that elbow, pressing into that lever. All right, let's slowly bring it back around. Coming into that bent position, but not quite as stretchy, I guess. Breathing into that forward fold position. When you're ready, if you'd like to try that bind, we're going to reach around the leg, the bent leg, touching the, the backs of the fingers to your back, finding that other hand, or maybe you want to use a strap here. Stretching down. All right, bring all the way back up. That was a little tougher for me. I don't know about for y'all. Bring those heels into each other, soles of the feet pressing towards each other, grabbing at those ankles and opening those legs up to you a know, much milder hip opener. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stay in a seated position. I'm just gonna turn to the side. All right, so we're gonna go into boat pose. So we're going to find that um, that flat, flattish part of your lower back, um, somewhat near the sacrum, but mine's lower than my sacrum, so I think it's different for everybody. Um, but for like for you, Kayla, like for um, Jessica, I think you could too, like if you've done CrossFit, kind of like we would do our, um, our rock, like our hollow rocks, sort of. So we're bringing your legs up. Also, my body tends to kind of lean over to one side. I can't change the balance in the middle. Tell me, okay, do, do, do what you gotta do. We're gonna bring our, our knees up here and we're gonna compensate for the balance by leaning back into a straight position. So our spine is straight, our knees are lifted. And this is modified boat because I'm holding on, right? So if you don't wanna modify, you wanna see if you can just hold, hands are gonna come out. Your oars can be wherever you want. Your oars can be out to the side, your oars can be up, you can extend the mask of your ship or whatever you want to call it. I don't know all the boating terms, but whatever nautical thing you want to think of right there. Holding that boat pose. Breathing. And then release. My hip flexor is going. All right, pressing the feet into the floor. Hands are going to come behind us with the fingertips towards our toes, pushing up into to the tabletop position, activating those shoulders and biceps, really pushing the weight into those hands, holding tabletop flat if you can, keeping the hips as level to the knees as you as you can, squeezing the glutes. And if you want to extend it to incline plank, you can, like come straight, lifting up the chest, lifting up the hips, squeezing the glutes again. And then we slowly lower it down. So we're gonna do a variation of what we just did, bring the feet back in. If this is bothering your wrists, by the way, you can go to your elbows or you can go to your fists. You need to modify, 
or if those if it's just killing you all together if you've got a chair or a couch nearby you can always prop yourself up against that and lift your hips off the floor like a blue grid um, so for the next one two the next two we're going to do a figure four all the hip openers today y'all so we're going to bring one leg over like you're just chilling and then we're going to push into that tabletop in a figure four so really squeezing the glute squeezing the core tight take a deep breath in and exhale bring it back down very tempting to drop your butt when you do this opposite side pressing open with that knee flexing that foot pushing into the opposite leg Woo. let that hip rise don't let it drop and release all right we're going to come back down into our belly we're making our way down the floor even further cool. i'm so afraid it's wet meat now i still have a giant sweat beat from last tuesday just try to concentrate on something other than me i'm talking to you guys and the sweat beat i just don't want to hear it all right we're going to our belly you're not right there sorry belly here we go. All right, so we're gonna make a um, goal post arms. Make goal post arms with our elbows bent. Okay, so 90 degree angles with those elbows, like this, like you're scoring a touchdown. And we're gonna squeeze the glutes. You can keep your feet on the floor here, or you can lift them off the floor. All right. And kind of like an albatross um, wingspan, but you can either extend it or hold them here. We're just going to kind of come up to one side. See if you can keep the opposite side off the floor and then bring it back down and then go to the back side. Inhale and exhale. Bring it all the way up. Inhale and exhale. Same thing. Inhale. And back to the center. Y'all see it, you better unmute and tell me. You traumatized. <laughs> but yet I still continue to do these classes outside. I'm a, I'm a slow study. All right, so go ahead and rest the hands on the floor, dropping your face towards your hands. And this one, we're going to keep our, our upper body relaxed. I'm sorry, our, yeah, our upper body relaxed. Squeeze the glutes really tight. We're going to lift the feet and the knees off the floor. And we're going to open and shut. Open and shut. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Do it again. One more. And exhale. And then release all the way down to the floor. All right, so we're going to do that whole combo one more time. Arms are going to come out, go up those arms, squeezing the glutes. Feet can be elevated or not. Inhaling as you come up on one side, looking up towards that hand, and then exhale, slowly come back down, all the way up on the other side. And exhale, really strengthening the back side of your obliques. Inhaling a little bit of that mid back too, and then come down, relaxing the upper body, squeezing the glutes, legs come open. Legs come shut. Inhale, exhale. And release down to the floor. All right, y'all. Hands are going to come underneath us. Squeeze your glutes one more time. Push up and away from the floor into Cobra. Or stay with your elbows to the floor in Baby Cobra. Lifting up the chest. Activating that lower back, really stabilizing through the core. And once you feel like you can, you can walk your hands a little further back. Breathing deep, squeezing the glutes, still protecting that lower back. If you want a little more sensation, you want to bring those feet up, you can. And then when you're ready, we're going to push back 
into child pose. So kind of round that back out. Maybe leave your knees underneath you so that you can round your belly over them instead of sinking your belly through your knees to the normal child pose or extended child pose. Take a few breaths here. Very close, looking up onto those hands. We're gonna get one more downward facing dog in here just to finish this out. Spreading those fingers real big, toes curl under, push back into downward facing dog. From here, if you want to just go into any pose that we haven't hit today, any kind of stretch, any kind of balance pose, if you skip balance today, you can do that now. You can do any any pose for about the next 60 seconds or so, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna come in a dolphin, dropping my Elbows towards the floor, but keeping my hips up and dropping my head. It's just kind of dangling, kind of hovering in between my arms. This is a great precursor for um, headstands to learn how to be inverted and walking those feet up. The closer your feet get to the hands, the more your head can actually drop to the floor. Whatever pose you feel like you need to get out of your system, your body is telling you to do something before we get down to the floor. Do it. Listen to your body. And as you wrap those poses up, get whatever you gotta do, either side. Yeah, good, Kayla. Good job. I don't know what everybody else is doing. I can't see you, but get those, those poses in. We're gonna go ahead and take it down to our back for just a couple of stretches here and then we'll finish up in Shavasana. So once you're on your back, bring those knees into the chest. Hands come underneath the knees so that we don't hyperextend those knees and just kind of roll that back a little bit. Mine is squishy, squishing into the floor. <sighs> All right, y'all, open up those arms wide. Let's take our knees over to one side. Pausing for one big breath. And back to the middle, rotating to the opposite side. Pausing for one big breath. And back to the center. Opening up those knees, going into your happy baby, your dead bug. Keeping that tailbone pressed towards the floor. Or maybe you want to go ahead and go straight into that straddle split. Whatever your body is telling you to go ahead and get that in. Maybe you want to stay in that egg pose. All right, y'all, just kind of wiggling those hip joints a little bit since we did so many hip flexors today. Egg beaters, hands can stay on your knees and rotate those legs the opposite directions. And then switching it up. Or maybe just some windshield wipers, just kind of let those hips loosen up. Taking the knees side by side. Careless, like just carefree movement, allowing those legs to kind of adapt. And then when you're ready, we'll go ahead and start extending the body into a side, into a lying position or a side lying position. Whatever you feel like doing for Shavasana today. So we've got several minutes here. I want you guys to just really concentrate on allowing that body to sink into the floor, taking up as much space in the earth as you can. Breathing through our nose and out our mouth or the nose. And just really focusing on that breath. Sending some positive vibes to our, our thoughts, making sure we're telling ourselves good things right now about our bodies and about our abilities, our strength. The fact that we took time out of our day to do this for ourselves, that's a good one. Even when it's not easy, even when there's distractions, 
even when your to-do list is a mile long and you feel guilty that you stopped doing it so that you could do this for yourself, like get rid of those negative thoughts. We're just we're thinking about how grateful we are that we were able to move our bodies this way. And our mental, our mental um, capacity is much better for it, I think. So taking a couple more deep breaths. So I want you to just breathe for the next few minutes. And when you hear my chimes, that's when you'll know to roll over on one side or maybe roll up into a seated position. There's no rush once you hear the chimes. Don't panic. It's not, it's okay. It's okay. okay. We're gonna just breathe for a few moments. I want you to take this time for yourself. If other thoughts start entering your mind, like that to-do list or like distractions, just acknowledge them, that's fine. But then send it away and just focus on your breath um, for the next, few minutes and I'll bring us back in just a moment.
those fingers and toes just again. Maybe rolling those ankles and wrists out, shoulders kind of pulling down away from your ears, rolling over on one side or rolling on up to seated position, whatever feels like the next step for you. Just keep on laying there like somebody in my class on Saturday did for the whole rest of the time. Hope you will sleep. <laughs> Rolling those shoulders back and away from the ears. Anybody ever wonders why I can't lay down in my own classes while we do Shavasana? It's because I too will fall asleep. Bring those hands up all the way over those heads, bringing in those fingers right there. Anahata Mudra. Prayer pose. Rolling those shoulders back. Thinking of one kind thing you can say to yourself in the next couple of breaths. Finding that thing that you love about yourself today. And since you're muted, you can even say it out loud. But you can say it in your mind, just telling yourself that one good thing, that one, one awesome compliment. Right. That is it for us today, girls. And I would say, I would love to know what your nice compliment was. If you're comfortable sharing in the chat, if not, it is not a big deal. I love to hear other compliments of ourselves. It's hard. It's hard to do sometimes. But I appreciate y'all being here. Um, and this one will be um, uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you guys haven't checked out that YouTube channel, it is so great. Like it's all of these workouts we've done for the last month or so we've uploaded to the to the youtube so it's really it's really neat so you can catch them at any time i'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording i appreciate y'all